you got to have something that allows you to flip that switch, that allows you to snap out of it. Um, and I'm actually I'm getting trademarks right now. Is uh, is it's simple. It's reset, but it has meaning. Like, but think about it. It's like reset. Reset your fucking mind. Reset your attitude. Reset whatever. But what reset means is relentlessly embrace suffering and route to triumph. Hey, what's up? I'm Steve Eckert, United States Marine, entrepreneur and instructor of the project, and welcome to the project show. This show is all about men who are in search of meaningful transformations in what we call the four F-bombs, the family, the fitness, the finances, and their faith. And this occurs through emotional, physical, and mental hardship and sacrifice so that they can become better fathers, husbands, leaders, entrepreneurs, and better men in general. Today I want to welcome a special guest, a graduate of class 003 and the honor man of class 003, Chris Weichman. Thanks for coming by. Awesome to see you as usual. I've known Chris now for several years. Chris, can you just introduce the, to the audience yourself, what you do, your family? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you having me on. Um, yeah, my name is Chris Weichman. I'm an entrepreneur, business owner. I own two Fit Body Bootcamp studios with the uh, Bay Drove School Dance franchise. Um, I also do uh, an advisor business for uh, leadership advising uh, for corporate entities. Um, I'm married. My wife was uh, and I are both retired military, and we have three kids. I have twin daughters that are 13 and a 10 year old son. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. So let's jump. Right, let's just jump right into it. Yeah. Let's let's just think back. And if you could remember when you were first hearing about the project, you were the, the third class when you first saw it. What was it that you, you saw that just grabbed you and, and told you, you know, spoke to you and said, this is something I need to become a part of at, at this time in my life? What was it that really resonated with you? Yeah. So uh, uh, through my military career, I was at, had the opportunity to do several um, training iterations or courses that were very similar. So being removed from the military, uh, I had a, a gap, which like many uh, veterans do it, once they get out, that there's a void. Um, whether it's brotherhood, whether it's a sense of belonging, uh, being a part of a, a, a tight-knit community. And uh, I immediately was compelled or pulled to uh, the project be, because I felt that that could f fill that void again. Um, and uh, it was a kind of exciting, too, in a kind of a sick-minded way that, you know, like, oh, oh, yeah, I'd love to go get it on again. You know? I think you have to be a little fucking twist in the head to see some of the crazy videos on there and read about it and especially you after you were the third class you saw footage and videos in other class to see it and actually say you know what i want to i want in on that action so you got to be i think i'd be a little 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 twisted in the head and you you certainly have known you for so many years you are a little fucking <laughs> twisted in the head i think so that's what makes that's for sure makes us good <laughs> so on, on a deeper level than that even what were, what were some of like the struggles or adversity you were going through or things you needed to just i like to say unfuck about yourself and what we're looking really to achieve out of it other than filling that void. Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, uh, straight up honesty, you know, my military career, um, matter of fact, this week my is my 15 year anniversary. Out of 15 years, my wife and I have actually spent seven anniversaries together because I deployed like crazy. I just different trips, different things that mm -hmm. I had done. And uh, um, our marriage is great, but my wife learned to build a coping mechanism of okay, he's gonna be leaving again soon. So getting that acceptance back in the family now being out of the military, there was this wall and it was just, I didn't have that relationship that I desired or needed a connection with my wife and my kids. They had all built that coping mechanism up of like, well, dad's here just temporarily until he has to go on his next trip. And uh, it was a real struggle. It was really hard to know what I needed to be and who I needed to be to get that back or mm -hmm. to even conceivably create that because uh, for my kids, that's all they knew is my military career. They knew that dad comes home for a short while and is gone a long time. And uh, um, it was it was pretty, it's pretty uh, volatile at home sometimes, not in so much the, you know, like fights or arguing or any of that as much as it was just not able to connect, not having a relationship with your kids. They feel comfortable coming to you and talking to you about things or because they don't know how long you're gonna be there or if you're gonna be able to actually do anything about it. So um, I needed 
to re either relate with people that have gone through that or were going through that and or uh, be able to find a way and confide in a, somebody that I could trust to say, hey, this is what I'm going through. You know, outside eyes, outside ears, somebody who might be able to relate, even if it's gone through a different experience. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you do that as with well, the way we're wired with, you know, somebody that you're so close, your family. And to be able to do that and speak to another man like that, being vulnerable, right? And right. Not, not have to feel like you're being a bitch or being soft yeah. or weak. I think that's a problem with men. They think yeah. that if you talk to another man about think these types of things, that it makes them a soft. They think they need to be a Billy Badass and it makes them not Billy Badass. I, I think a, a real badass is a man like yourself who's shit willing to kill for your country, but also willing to be able to be vulnerable like this and talk about it. that's what a real badass is. And again, I appreciate your service and, and I can imagine what it's like having you know, kids and, and being gone for such a long amount of time, that's a, that's a stress and a struggle. So it, it sounded like the project was exactly yeah. what you needed for to, to fill that void. That, yeah. That's awesome stuff. Appreciate you sharing that, no, that you. with us. So once you realize, you know, this is what I need to get involved with, uh, you made that decision this week, what were some of the hesitations you were having when it came down to actually following through with it and, and getting registered and making it happen? Yeah, no, you know, it's, uh, I would say it probably walked the path of all of it that everybody, you know, go to the wife and be like, yeah, we don't have the mil money for that. Or, you know, you're going to mm -hmm. go off, you know, for me, being gone all the time, like, oh, you want to go again? Going again. Right. So when's it going to end? Right. Yeah. You know, it's like, well, why is how is this going to be different than what you did in the military? And that was a big one because my wife knows that, OK, you've gone and suffered and done things like this. And like, or, why are you going? You know, are you going to just get your rocks off? You know, like, mm. like. Why, why would you do this? Like, and I actually had to take a couple months to figure out like, okay, well, well, why do I need to do this? Because in her mind, I got paid to do things like this before. Now I'm gonna pay somebody and mm -hmm. go back through yeah, this again. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you were medically retired from the military. They deemed you unfit. And yet you wanna go do something like this again. And uh, for me, it, it was, I finally clicked. I was like, you know what, one, I want to, camaraderie I want the brotherhood back and it's an investment in me because I hadn't been tested and what I mean by that is military yes I'd been tested I'd gone through this stuff I jump school dive school you know all the works the career field that I had but now that I was technically disabled by the military like, what does that mean to me? Mm -hmm. Like, what are my limits? Have I pushed my past, my perceived limits to find where my, okay, I'll try to break myself. Is your life on the downhill? Like, you've right. proved yourself. You right. still have a lot more left in right. you, a lot more in the tank to and give that, than. That was it. So I was like, you know what? That's well worth any investment to be able to have that back and then have that belonging again and be able to have, you know, people that you can relate to. So let me ask you, how did you get your wife on board with that? Because it'd be gone for years, mm -hmm. getting paid, and that's that's a great point you made. You were getting paid to do it. Now you're going to go pay to go do it. Right. And 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 it's a significant amount. This is the highest level of personal development you could have in the world to join the project. You know, outside of the military, this is as as good as it gets. So how did you how did you get her on board and and be able to go through with this? Yeah, I actually I sat down with her and I told her I was like, hey, look, I need this because, and I related to her as like. I need this to be able to be, have a better relationship with you and better find a way better to, for us to connect and connect with our kids. And I said, I said, whether you want to call me an adrenaline junkie or a thrill seeker or whatever it is, like, you know me, my whole career, I'd walk out the door living life on edge. Whether I was going to jump out of a plane, mm -hmm. I was deploying, I was working with X, Y, and Z guys, whatever I was doing, it was like, I'd come home and tell you a story. And I'm like, okay, you know, but it's like, I haven't had that. And I don't know where I'm going to get that in the future, right? I said, so I don't have anybody to relate to that's like-minded. And I, I said, I need that. It's, I've got to have it, Is it, whether it's as a guy, whether it's just the way I'm wired, whether it's like, so, so I, I see this as an opportunity to do that. And uh, she's like, okay, we'll figure it out. But... Um, she is, she always has to figure out how to cash flow it. <laughs> so once I figured that out, yeah. she's like, go. So so you got the support of, because because yeah. I'll tell you, that's what I hear from men a lot. And I think most of the time is it's their excuse that my wife isn't on board with it. And mm -hmm. what, if, what if your wife wasn't on board with it? How would that, how would that go? Just, and this is just totally off the cuff. This is nothing yeah. that we have planned to talk about or anything. Just, just curious, how, how would you go about that? Like realizing that this, you need this 
in order to be better for her, right? Mm-hmm. But she's not on board with it because you weren't good with her in the first place. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. So how do you convince her of it when you know you need it for her, but she doesn't think you need it because you've been kind of clashing a little bit by being away? What, what would happen if, if she wasn't on board with it? But you know that this is what you needed to better your relationship with her. She just doesn't understand that yet until after you actually go through it. How, how would that go down? You know, um, I think we have a strong enough relationship that if I went to her and be like, hey, you just need to trust me on this. Um, she would back off enough. She may not like it. She may not still agree with it. But we've always been the couple that we can we can agree to disagree. But she trusts me enough to know that I'm not going to jeopardize or put our family at risk. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that's part of it too. Is you know one trust and risk is like relating like, hey, you need to trust me that it, I'm going to make sure to see this through, and I'm not going to put us in that hardship and in the, you know that risk aspect of it too. Is like I will. No matter what happens, I'm not going to put you and our children and our future at risk. So you had enough strong enough relationship and enough trust that even if she's 100% against it, you still could have gone and done this. Yeah, I would have probably been in the doghouse for a little while, but coming back. But it's be worth it because yeah. you're going to come back and you're going to get out of that doghouse quick from different skills. Because that's the point I want to make to men out here because I, I speak to men every day, tons of men. And they'll, they'll say that their wife just wasn't on board with it. And that's why they're not going to do it. But that's the exact fucking reason why they need to do it. Because their wife's not on board with it because they're clashing. So even though they're 100% against it, they need to go do it. And let me, let me, let me get your opinion on this. And not saying yourself, but if a man said, oh, if I go do something like this, I know I need it. I'm 100% committed to it. I need to do it. My wife's 100% against it. If I go do it, she's going to divorce me. What do you think about that relationship in general? No, you definitely need to step back and reflect like, okay, if you're... If this is something that's that important to you and you know it's in an effort to fix the relationship you have, and, um, there's an unwillingness on the opposite side and you need to question it. I mean, because I'll hear that like on a daily basis. Yeah. They'll use the D word all the time. My wife will divorce me if I can go do this. She's against it. And they know they need it because they're fucked up. That, the fact that the wife is saying something like that, I think, is the exact reason why they need to fucking do it anyway, you know what I mean? Because yeah. they need something. Obviously, what they're doing is not working. If their wife is throwing out or around the D word yeah. over going to do a personal development program, they're looking to become a better husband, better father, better leader. Think about that. And it's exactly what you said. They need to probably question that relationship because that's, I think, a huge point. Because mm-hmm. when I asked you, what would you do if your wife was a uh, 100% against it? You said you was strong and that's powerful. That's some, that's some deep shit. And I appreciate you sharing that, that yeah. you would do it anyway. She might be a little pissed off about it, but when you got home, you're gonna you're going to make it right so fast because mm-hmm. of probably the skills that you just upgraded and sharpened the saw yeah. when you're away. So it'd be all worth being in the doghouse in the months leading up to the class or whatever. Yeah, you know, and the other part of it too is it comes down to um, if you're already making those excuses, then, you know, um, as a graduate now and somebody who's gone through courses like this, it's like, okay, look, man, you got to want it. Like, if you're going to go to your wife and you're willing to take that kind of sacrifice, you, you better want it. So if you're willing to accept, accept mm-hmm. that if you go to this, I'm going to be divorced, and you believe that, then you're not passionate enough about that you need this to fix your marriage. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it makes it, sense perfectly. Like the, the excuse they're using is the exact fucking reason why yeah. they need to do it in the first place. It's like reverse engineering. It makes. I mean, makes if sense. I had to, I would sell my car, they sell whatever off to get the money, just to say, hey, look, just to prove to you, I've got the cash now in hand. And this is what it's going to. Mm-hmm. And I sold my personal belongings just so you understand how committed I am to try to fix our relationship. So you for, if you would have not done it, it wouldn't have been because of her. Mm-hmm. It would have been because of you, right? right. If you, you would have found right. the reason not to do it. Oh, I can't afford it. But I, if I have to sell a motor, if I have to do this to that, to come up yeah. with the money, there's always a way to make it happen. Right. Like every, These are always just excuses that men fall in that mm-hmm. revolving pattern. And that's why their wife threatens to divorce them over, over shit like this because... Yep. Is that's the exact reason why they need it, uh, if that makes sense. And that's, that's kind of what it sounds like you're saying. Yeah. And that's some good stuff. That's, that's, a, that's some um, deep stuff there, and I'm glad we got, we got to really cover that. So let's go into the, the project itself, the experience, <laughs> the fun we had together, sharing some fun together. It was a fucking <laughs> blast. I, have a, I, I need this. I need it as much as, 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 as everyone that goes through it does, like the yeah. instructors. If I wasn't able to be an instructor every time, I would probably sign up for every fucking class because we, <laughs> we need that reboot every time. Right, it's and therapeutic. We, it is, 100%. We get so much out of it and so much fulfillment out of it and reset and reminders, shit that we've heard hundreds of times, like, shit, I need to get that 
more in line myself. I'm fucking up in that area myself. And someone that maybe you're bringing up about your relationship, your life. I'm like, shit, I need to get as my or else I'm a fraud if I don't. Right. So right. it's a reset. Yep. So what, were, what was your least favorite part of the experience, whether evolution or task or event that you did during the project? What was your least favorite? Well, you know, going back to what we said, it's definitely a little sick in the head. I really didn't dislike any of it. Um, what I what I did find in my own personal limits was there was one iteration um, where um, one particular uh, person in our class was continuing just fuck it up, fuck it up, and we were getting hammered by carrying the weights around mm -hmm. the building, and we weren't making time to carry the weights around the building, and I realized real quick that my hands and my nerves were just shit, and mm -hmm. so I started doing this, and you guys remember because then I went in the pull up bars. And held like this. I don't remember anything. It's all it's all <laughs> but, uh, blacked out. That was probably my least favorite because I'm okay with getting hammered because making a mistake every once in a while. But repetitive mm -hmm. mistakes and like not somebody, learning, somebody's not learning not, the lesson and yeah, not. somebody's not catching on. I'm like, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna I'm gonna join the instructors here real quick because you're trying to really fucking piss me off and you're not catching the hint mm -hmm. and you're not grasping what we're trying to get you to do and. And people always ask, they ask me, they're like, so what part did you manufacture, like when, when you're punishing someone, for what part you manufacture? We don't need to, right? No, we do it yourself. They're doing it like yeah. stupid little shit. <laughs> and then they're repeating the same thing over and over again. So I, I get your frustration, like, fuck, I'm getting, I'm suffering and getting tortured. I can't even feel my hands anymore because of the stupidest, simple little piece of, you know, a lack of attention to detail yeah. that someone's having on the same task over and over. I don't even remember the situation exactly that you're talking about, but I'm probably guessing Whoever calls that probably didn't even make it. I don't even know. I'm not, no, I'm not sure. No, they yeah. didn't. I'm sure they ran, ended up ringing the bell if they weren't getting it over and over yeah, again. Yeah, it was uh, one of the individuals we actually peered out. So that is a way, way you, you and that's the way it should be. And that, that's that's a, that's a tough pill to swallow, but that's that's real life, right? Yeah. It, it, transmitting, giving, re receiving, and transmitting feedback is, is what it's all about. Yeah. So good stuff there. So talking about your least favorite things, like things like that. Obviously, everyone, you know, a man like yourself is not a quitter, right? But every man that says that they've never thought about throwing the towel in certain areas of life, they're fucking lying. Because I know I've done it myself, and there, there, you have those moments of doubt. When you had those moments of doubt during the project, what was your internal trigger that made quitting not even an option? Made it, there's no question about it. Obviously, you're not going to quit. But what was it that you had to kind of maybe tap into here and there? And I don't want to say make you not quit because I just know you long enough that you weren't going to quit. And what, what, what was it that made you lose, get rid of those pieces of doubt that you had in your head? Yeah, you know, whenever I have a, a, a moments like that where I'm like, okay, do it, it's not so much the quiz. Like, do I really want to put myself through this shit right now? Like, eh, you know, like, okay, why the fuck am I doing this again? Um, or like, if I ever allow myself the moment to think, hey, you have a choice. I quickly squash it. I'm like, no, no, you don't. You, uh, I always try to walk into situations like that. Like, it's just, it's not an option. It doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that it, it's just a bad seed. It's just like, okay, well, since that doesn't exist, then the only other thing to do is figure, figure out the problem. Like, well, this is nothing but a problem presenting itself. And I uh, mean, they're going to, okay, is it meant to be solved or is it just meant to be to experience? And say, like, well, Either way, I'm going to experience it, and I'm going to try hard to solve it and try mm -hmm. hard to complete the iteration. Um, but then for me, like a long time ago, um, I actually failed out of a course, and the um, person that was next to me quit. And they had an opportunity. They were gold, and they could have finished. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you motherfucker, I would give anything to be able to continue but I filled out because I missed too, too many questions on the test the day before graduation. And this dude just decided to fucking, I'm done. When he had the capability of doing right. it, but mentally like, didn't have it. You give me your, give me your gift to mm -hmm. fucking be able to do switch spots. Like take my test, let me fucking keep going. You know, and it was e something that I could easily have corrected or been taught to get past the things that I missed. It was a range estimation test on guessing the mm -hmm. ranges on a rifle range. And I had just missed the, the two, ra two uh, range estimates and it was too, too many. I'm guessing that stung a little bit when oh, that happened. It sat with me forever, you know? And, and I was did like, you ever, did you ever think about that moment during the project? Yeah, and part of it too was uh, the other side is like, uh, never going home until my son I quit. Imagine that, imagine 
I'm I mean, never going to allow him to know that I quit on something. Imagine the men that, and I'm, I want to talk to the men out there that fly across the fucking country. They, they prepare for months. They tell their family, they tell their kids, their son, yeah. daddy's going to become a better man. I'm going to become this badass, this modern day knight. And then they get to the point where they fucking break down. The physical part is the easy part. The physical mm -hmm. part is fucking easy. It's just physical. You either can do it or you can't. As right. long as you're putting out and working fucking hard, that's the easy part. They break down mentally or emotionally and they have to do the march in front of all their peers and ring consciously, intentionally ring a bell and say, I quit. Mm -hmm. Now they have to fly back to their family early. Just think of that. Like Think of, think of that. It's a, it, to me, every time they ring, it's like that's a deep moment in, 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 yeah. that they're going through because you know what's coming for them, what they have to go and face in the future. So it sounds like that's what you couldn't even imagine. I mean, you couldn't no, imagine doing that. that I, w I wouldn't do it. it. I just wouldn't do it. It, I, it just wouldn't exist. I no, hear you. exactly. Like, I mean, we had a guy who, in our class, two hours in, we were on the beach, did it. And he flat out, like, the thing that just infuriated me, like, went through me like a spark. And the thing he said after he rang the bell was, yeah, he goes, I I've always quit everything. And my kids are going to know that I'm a quitter. And that's all they'll ever know me to be. Like, he willingly said that after ringing the bell and only being in the course for two hours. And that I'm his like, kids know he's a like, quitter. That's some right, fucking rough, like, that's some rough shit. How can you, how can you do that? Like, I, I just I can't comprehend the mindset that it would take to be able to, to accept that. Like, and yet somehow that person is su supposedly successful in business and other parts of his mm -hmm. life that... It just goes to show you to have fulfillment, you need to have it in your family, in your fitness, in your finances, in your faith in yourself to get real fulfillment. That's like the new F-bomb we'll yeah. be adding in. It needs to be a culmination of all of this because you can have all the money in the world. If your kids know you're a fucking quitter, I don't, wouldn't, I don't give a shit if I had billions of dollars. I yeah. think my son thinks and knows I'm a quitter. Think about that. Like this is, no. that's some deep shit. That's some like serious shit and that's some fucked up shit really. It's some fuck Yeah, it is. Like that's someone doing a disservice to the future generations and... I'd rather my kid knew I was a killed somebody than to know I was a quitter. Mm. That's, that's some real shit right there. <laughs> some real shit right there, let me tell you. So let's shift gears a little bit from that. And well actually speaking of the, the quitting, you had a you had the highest percent, you had a fifty percent dropout rate, I think, right? Of your of your class. Yeah, we had five out of nine. Oh, so higher then. Okay, yeah. yeah. Wow. That that's because four graduated in your class only, right? Yep. Yeah, that's that's some crazy shit. And some of them were early on too, like that one you said two hours in, so. Two hours in, the very next morning after waking up, and then uh, one more, and then, yeah. <laughs> I can see you getting antsy just thinking about it, like how the how, how could someone go back to their, their kid? And, and it's some serious, this is why I wanna drive this point home to the viewers, viewers watching, that and the men watching, like your, Kids fucking deserve better than that. Your your future grandchildren that don't even fucking exist deserve better than that. Like, think about that. Think about that. Because something's a little uncomfortable. Like, easy is fucking easy. Easy leads to an average, miserable fucking life. Hard, hard shit, doing hard shit, accomplishing hard shit leads to success, leads to victory, leads to being a role model to your kids that you're looking to be. When they look at you, they say, I want to be like that man, not look at you like I did to my father and say, I want to be the fucking exact opposite of that man. Like, that's that's some deep shit, like what you're saying here about that this guy told you that, and I didn't even know that that happened. Yeah. And it's getting me pissed off here. I'm getting fucking fired up. And <laughs> now I'm going to, uh, everyone that I've done these interviews with have just, Made it 10 times worse for the people that are going through it. So now you're making me hear this stuff of like what went on behind the scenes because these are things that the instructors yeah. never hear about, right? Because you're doing that behind the scenes. And you're here now to help that group out. And I don't know if you know, there's two guys here in this group coming in that actually rang the bell in previous classes. Oh. Two candidates coming in in this group tomorrow that you're helping out with that, that rang the bell. One from the last, just the last class and one from a couple classes ago. There's two guys coming in that are looking to redeem themselves. So I at least going for a second try, but just, just hearing this story is, is fucking pissing me off and, and it's unacceptable. Man, this is unacceptable. Like this is not what a, a man in this world is, is meant to be like. You're meant to do more than that. So realize that shit. It's, and not, it's your legacy. You're, you're corrupting your legacy.
I hear you 100%. Let's, let's, before shit just goes crazy and I start throwing shit, because this is getting me fucking pissed off and I'm getting ready for tomorrow. Before that, let's just switch gears. What was, yeah, this is, and this is a little one. This will go for a ride. <laughs> we'll get some frequent flyer miles on this little one. That's a light one. So what, what, let's switch gears to what was some of your favorite events or evolutions that happened during during your experience in the project? <laughs> well, one that sticks out most with me is uh, during FTX, um, I had the pleasure of sitting directly across the table from you and Instructor Ray when you flooded his mask and Ray proceeded to put on the show of drowning in the mask and you were choking him out and, and I'm sorry I couldn't keep a straight face. Like that shit was hilarious. Because I knew, I'm like, okay, there's no so way. So there's other guys there. That, let's not give away too much information. Let's not spoil it for too many people. Like, but the other guys that are sitting there, they and they're seeing what, if this is happening to a Navy SEAL, yeah. like, <laughs> he can't even handle it. How the fuck am I going to do it? And it's, it's it, you know, it's the way it went. And yeah. I was making sure that he was going to get the effect of that. Yeah. And, and you're just a sick fuck that you see a Navy SEAL drowning, and it's funny to you. So <laughs> you're just sick in the head. So for that... And I'll make sure Ray knows that, that that was your <laughs> your favorite part, watching him drown and pretty much go unconscious and get choked out and, and his hair yanked back and all this other stuff. That that, that you enjoyed that. That's, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. So let's talk about in the, in the military. I know I'm sure you've had many moments where you're going through the suck. Like, it just fucking sucks. You're freezing, whether it's in cold weather training, desert training. It's horrible, miserable. But then after the fact... You're with all your brothers afterwards, and it's just like at the graduation dinner ceremony, think about it, at the project, we're sitting there and just all we're doing is ha reflecting on all the, the crazy suffering that went on in the previous hours. What yeah. are some moments that stand out for you that are just like after the fact, it sucked during the fact, but afterwards you're like, you know, that was some good shit. That, was, that shit was fucking funny. Like, I yeah. appreciate that. What, what were some moments like that? Anything like that stands out for you? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's always that remember when or do you remember, do you remember so-and-so doing this? Fucking so and that, that's some of the ones that mm -hmm. um, for me one was um, <laughs> there's uh, we had a guy who was named Preacher and uh, he Bedros decided to go up to him and just kind of ask him like hey did you see Steve wears two different color shoes he's like you ever wonder why and the guy just just did not stop he immediately pivoted on point walked straight over to you like he was your best friend and said, hey, Steve, what's the deal with the two different color shoes? Like, no I'm, thought to I'm, why, like, time out. Maybe you shouldn't do this. Maybe Didn't you Didn't try to stop him? Did you fucking know better? He was over there before he, he was quick. That's probably the fastest he moved all day, <laughs> right? That was, we, like, before we knew what he was doing, like, I heard him asking you the question and was like, what? No, stop. And it's too late. Before we even go on with the story, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that this gentleman didn't make it. No, I'm he did assume. not. He, he was actually one of the one we peered out. I'm assuming he ended up ringing the bell. So yeah, and I, and I get that asked all the time the shoes, but there's a time and a place for everything. That right. doesn't seem like I'm guessing that didn't end well for him or the group or no, whatever. No, it didn't end well for any of us. And, and, I, and I remember that actually. That motherfucker called me inspector, not even instructor. I remember right. he called me, on top to add insult to injury, he called me inspector. All Inspec of a sudden, I'm fucking inspector, inspector gadget. Steve. Inspector Steve. I said, inspector like Steve, why do you, and <laughs> and that's not the way we do things in the project. But no. anyway, no. But, but those are one of the moments that afterwards <laughs> you could sit and laugh about, and, and it makes for like amazing memories that you're going to remember the, the rest yeah. of your life. That same guy was the guy that was also sitting in the chair outside eating the donut when we were going in the ice bath for the fifth and sixth and seventh time. Oh, so he was the cookie monster, cookie yeah. monster. Yeah. Everyone's got it, there's always one of them. But I don't know if you remember. We He's need to stop talking about it, because you're gonna start getting pissed off, you're gonna start throwing <laughs> fucking tables and chairs he around. Took a, he just took a little bite and just sat there and just chewed it. It probably tastes good, and he, was probably, he was probably hungry and tired. <laughs> but I remember like, choke on that motherfucker. <laughs> he, was taking, he was enjoying every last bite of it. That shit was delicious. I, I didn't know he was doing that until you're like, oh yeah, just sit there and enjoy it. Go ahead, what the fuck? It was like, like he was on a, a, like a, a, a cookie porn commercial. He was sitting there, it was like slow motion chewing. Like he was savoring every bit of it, letting yeah. it just soak into his freaking lungs. That did. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that clearly. That was that was some good stuff. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. <laughs> so, all right. So we get to graduation. For day one, you're back home. 
What's some of the immediate effects, uh, positive effects you have that you took from the project and were able to implement immediately when you when you arrive back home? I know some other things are going to take some time to develop, mm -hmm. some some you know strategies and tactics, whatever. But what were some things you took with you right away, day one, like? This made an impact right away. Like I'm make, I, I've got a return on investment right now because of this. What, what is that? Yeah, um, a heightened sense of awareness of my own personal actions and how I interacted with my family. So they would ask me a question: How am I? Okay, stop. How do they need me to respond to mm -hmm. them? What do they need from me right now when they're asking me this? Because, like I said in the beginning. Um, there are few and far opportunities that they came to me to say, hey, dad, can you help me with this? Or reach out to mm -hmm. me because they were guarded. So when they did do that or we were had things to do as a family, it was like, okay, how do I need to be best, the best for them? How do I present myself the best for them and be present the way they need me, mm -hmm. not how I want to be necessarily? Um, and then, uh, you know, a, that heightened sense of awareness of like, what is my current relationship today with my wife, with my kids? Like, what is it that I can do to make that better today and every day? You know, and this like, is literally day one back after oh yeah, the project. I started like, in the car when I got picked up from the airport. That's like that's that's some priceless shit right there. That's yeah, I mean I, that's fucking priceless. We didn't we barely pulled up in front of the house when my wife and I sat in the car for two hours before we went in and the kids are excited to see oh, me. Oh, I saw in my out. head that going a whole different way. I thought you were going to say we jumped in the back seat and all this. <laughs> I, picked, I went a whole different direction with where you were going yeah. with that, but yeah, I hear you. I hear that you. That was later, but it was after we, we, we talked about some real heavy shit in a 25-minute drive to home, ended up in the two hours in front of the house mm -hmm. in the car while the kids are trying to figure out well, what the heck's mom and dad doing. And like just flat out like, hey, look, this is what I learned. This is what I'm going to start being better for mm -hmm. you. But it was also the honesty of, this is what I need from you. Mm -hmm. And just being very blunt, very Of course, forward. your expectations too, right. you gotta put it out there and make that clear, because uh, someone can't read your fucking mind, right, about yeah. what you're expecting. You know, and you know, like, and I th I'm pretty sure my wife would be comfortable with me sharing this now, is I came home that day, and uh, um, that's the day I asked her to stop drinking. She didn't have a serious problem, mm -hmm. but she would have a couple of drinks if she was stressed out, or, you know, and I knew it, and regrettably, um, it's not a good tendency with family stuff. So she, uh, she is, and she's been sober since. Since the day you came back from the project, that ride home. That's fucking crazy. I didn't know that. I didn't know that yeah. at that point either. That's, she hasn't had a drop. That's and, fucking awesome. And I stopped drinking too. That's fucking good shit right there. I like that. I like that. Good stuff. And that's immediate. That was immediate effect, yeah. right? And this yeah. is like day one return on investment. Like talk about you know return on investment, no matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter if this thing costs twelve thousand dollars or twelve million dollars. That alone, these things you're saying that happen immediately. And the, probably the conversation you had, I'm guessing, is the first time you had that type of conversation. Those two hours of talking about your expectations and what you're going to do differently. Probably either never had that type of conversation ever before in your life, or if you did, it was a, a long time over fucking due. It wasn't. It wasn't to the point that we're like in the car. I was like, I like, hey, no, this is it. Like, I'm drawing a line. This, this is where. I have to draw this line with us to make sure you understand how important this is. Mm -hmm. And it's at home. It, like it, it, it resonated and she understood and she saw that I had immediately implemented changes and she she did too. That's fucking awesome. That's as good as it can get. Yeah. Day one back, it, it doesn't get any better than that. So since then now, now it's been several months since you, you were class 03, we're starting class 006. What kind of longer term successes have you had and effects have you kind of had in your either personal relationships, professional in the business, whatever, as a leader, whatever it is, since the project, what other things have kind of manifested from that? You know, I, and it can go into both successes and just um, things that have had to face this year alone. I mean, it's been crazy for everybody mm. um, with the world's state of affairs and craziness and chaos and stupidity, however you want to label it. But, uh, um, uh, to give credit to Jason Redman in his book Overcome, he talks about being on the X. Uh, he talks about you know average person four to five times in a lifetime is going to be thrown on the mm -hmm. X and have to figure out how to get off right. of it. Since the project, I've had four like major X's, mm -hmm. major fucking X's, and I'm still figuring out how to get off of one of them right now. But having that experience from the project, having strength, having the community, and being able to reach out to that core group, 
like the very first people that I've called when I've got, had every one of those was one of the instructors or another uh, in modern day night. So, so you're, I mean, you're taking full advantage and completely bought into the, the lifelong brotherhood. I mean, that's what this is about is a lifelong brotherhood. It's trust. So when it comes down to like, in your, what you're saying is some serious life things going on and ambushes thrown on you, as you were saying, yeah. and you're reaching out to the project, either instructors, uh, other, other brothers that you were with that some of them you probably never knew before. Right. Until right. you, yeah. so you've known now less than a year or about a year yeah. and that's who you're going to. That's some, that's some deep stuff. And that just shows the power of the brotherhood. Like, what does that mean to you to have this connection and, and be part of this brotherhood? Like, h how much does that have really impacted you and affected you in your life, being part of that brotherhood? I'm sure you had, have seen it before in the military, but as you know, once you're out, kind of, the mil it, it, it fades out. You lose connection. Like, I know yeah. some guys from the Marine Corps that we, we connect on Facebook here and there, but it's nothing like the, the connections and relationships we have with guys in the project. It just isn't. And Yeah. No, um, I, I would be in, uh, I'd probably be in jail based off mm -hmm. of one of the things that have happened to me. Like if I if if I wasn't able to get a hold of Bedros with the emotional and mental state of affairs I was mm -hmm. in with one, you know, something that happened to one of my ch children, one of my daughters, uh, uh, I'd probably kill a motherfucker. So that's some, that's some, I mean, I appreciate you sharing that. That's some yeah. real shit, that's some deep, and that's that's really what, what the power of this brotherhood is all about, is yeah. having a group of, of men, badasses, but they're that, you can get vulnerable with and you can open up to and, and share your problems with and, mm -hmm. but also at times contribute to it. Also it go, you know, both, both ways and never expecting anything in return ever, yeah. not expecting anything, no matter what, no matter how much time or effort or whatever you give, not expect it. It's not even crossing your mind that anything is owed back to you from the universe, from karma, nothing like you were doing it just because that's just what you do as a, as a fucking man and as a modern day knight. Yeah. And, and that's what it sounds like. Yeah. Just give, give and take care of people. That's that's awesome stuff, and, and I appreciate you sharing all that yeah. with us. That's that's some real stuff and some, and some deep stuff. So, let's switch gears into let's say someone's in in your position. It's it's back when you were first considering getting getting registered for the project, and someone's having hesitations. They're either afraid, or they're again like we were saying, the wife, or it's too expensive, or the wife says it's too expensive. They're fear. They think that they can't handle it physically. Whatever. Someone that's in the in those shoes, kind of where where you were at in the beginning. It took you a while to to even get registered, what would you say to someone like that that's in that that state of, of hesitation? Yeah, uh, you know, everybody talks about investments and making sure you're set up for the future and whether you're real estate or any of that, it's like the best investment is in yourself. Mm -hmm. Like you want the biggest return, the the most impact, and um, if however you can find to make the most profound investment in yourself and see the connection of how investing in yourself could completely rewrite the path of your future, um, then there should be no question about it. And if somebody's willing to show you that path and take you down that path and you're gonna suffer to do it, then you need to embrace that suffering mm -hmm. because as history has shown, as people who have been the most um, uh, successful have conquered, have been the greatest, you know, like history members, those that have caused, surmounted the, the biggest victories, have come out of the deepest holes, have faced the biggest adversities, mm -hmm. you know, David Goliath type shit. And uh, it's like, you want your your legacy to be known just for your f well for your family, and you want to set that legacy straight, and you want to be the best possible. It's like you have to know, recognize when it's important to invest in yourself, and certain things like investing in yourself isn't going out and buying fucking um, a books on tape and reading a, a book that you know like experiences mm -hmm. that you can own because if you can live it and experience it and create those memories and then turn those into values and turn those into shared values with your own kids, with your family, or pass it, pass, pass it on to give somebody else strength to help somebody else, mm -hmm. then you'll never be forgotten. That's whether your name is actually written or typed or printed in a history book, 
your name is now engraved in somebody else's memory because of what you've done right. to help them to change their life. But you got to be willing to change your own first. And, and what's the point of financially investing in some real estate or literally, and this is as, as crazy as it sounds, even investing in your own child's college education mm -hmm. if your kid is going to grow up to despise you right. and you weren't the parent and the father and the leader that they were supposed to be. Who gives a shit if they have a college education if they hate you? It doesn't matter. Like, what right. is the point of it? Right. So the investment, as you're saying, needs to first and foremost over everything, over money and the cars. It shit doesn't mean anything, right? It means absolutely nothing. If you have a shitty relationship with your, your spouse and your, your kids, are you are not who your kids want to be. Like, that's what we say with the project is you need to become the man that your son wants to become mm -hmm. and also become the man that your daughter, the type of man that one day she wants to marry. And right. if you can't say yes to those things, you shouldn't even be investing, not even their own college, until you can get your own fucking shit together. Right. And that's what a lot of men don't realize, because I talk to men every day on the phone talking about this kind of stuff. And no, I could, I could buy a new car with that money, they say. Or I can send my kid to college with that money. That's, that shit is useless. So now you're going to send a kid to college that fucking hates you. Yeah. Like, no, there's no point. Learn how to be a better leader, better entrepreneur, better father. Learn how to make more money so you're not concerned about where to put the money. So that's, that's what, what it sounds like you're saying, and that's yeah. some good stuff. All right, awesome. So I always like to finish off with this. What are two or three pieces of advice you, you're here to help as a junior instructor with a class starting tomorrow? So to those men coming through, I mean, the ones that rang, the two gentlemen that rang the bell that are coming back for a story of redemption. So that, that group, but also just the future viewers out there that are considering the project or maybe register for the project or, you know, waiting for their class to come up. They're just in the bullpen waiting. What are two or three pieces of advice you'd, you'd give to them as they prepare and get ready for their class to come up? Yeah, you know, um, I said it earlier, the big, big first thing is your mindset. If you, you're already defeated yourself, You've already set yourself up for failure. If you walk into this with the mindset that quitting is an option or that it even exists, like you need to suppress it and wipe it completely out of your vocabulary. It's just it's 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 worse than a fucking curse word in my house. It's I don't I don't tolerate the word I can't and quit. Just mm -hmm. just fucking just eradicate that shit. Get rid of it when it doesn't exist in your life, your perspective and your the way you approach life completely changes. Like you, you never, you don't have the option to quit when you go into something. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I gotta figure it out. Like I, I just gotta figure the fuck out. At what you're saying, that trigger, that reset is kill. It's it's yeah, kill, kill, meaning right. yeah. kill doubt, yeah, kill fear, kill procrastination. Yeah. Stopping a little bitch and just do it. Have you ever read the book, The Five Second Rule? It's basically yeah. what it says is, is you're doubting something, you're not taking action on something, you need to send that email, you need to have that tough conversation, count down to five and get it started before you get to, get to zero. And yeah. it's, it's, it's all, it's the same idea. And you need those triggers. So that's, that's great help, I think, to the candidates out there is to have that, have that trigger and know how to, how to change your state, basically. Immediate yeah. change of state. If you're sitting there and you're questioning whether I should, should or shouldn't do this, it's like, go. Don't allow yourself to sit there and question. Go, do it. Awesome stuff. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? That alone, those, I mean, those pieces of advice, was, that, was there another one? I know you were, no, you were okay, that was the last, the, the, that alone right there, it can help anyone join the project, but really think about it. Every time we, we end with this, these pieces of advice for upcoming classes, what it really is, what you don't realize is, this is advice for fucking life, right? Because the project is life, teaching how to live your life better, but this is really advice for anyone, men and women, in, in all areas of life, both personally and professionally. So just even those pieces of advice at the end of each of these shows is, is gold and can get you to that next level of success. You just follow these things and, and they sound so simple, but sometimes not so simple to go implement it. It's, it sounds like common sense, but it's useless if you're not implementing it and taking action on it. And like he said, reset, like I said, kill and, and attacking it, attacking those hills. So good stuff there. I appreciate you coming out and sharing Thank all you. that with you and, and sharing all the, your experiences with us. So men, let me tell you that the project, as you know, this is about meaningful transformations physical, mental, emotional. So you be, can become a better father, better husband, better leader, better entrepreneur. So you can make more money, have more fulfillment as the man that you know you're meant to be. That's what this show is all about. Whether or not you come and join us here at The Project, this is what it's about. So if this show has helped you in any way, if you've gotten any piece of, uh, you know, a, nugget, a golden nugget out of this show, just put a comment down below. What was the number one takeaway you got from this show? 
just like this video and then make sure you click down below to subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss any of the future episodes and you will get just literally life-changing information right here yeah. on this show every single time. And just imagine, imagine this. If you can get this type of life-changing nuggets that can literally change your life just from this episode alone with Chris and what Chris has shared with us, this is literally life-changing stuff. Just imagine if you can get that on a YouTube video in just a few minutes of us talking, imagine how deep and granular and to the bare bones of it all you can get when you spend four straight days here with us where you're blocking out the outside world and for the first time probably ever in your life, you can go deep internally to get rid of all those self-limiting beliefs and roadblocks and obstacles that are in your way when you're here for four days with us in Southern California with the project. So if you need any help with that, need any information with that, just leave a comment below. Just send me a private message. Let's talk about it. Make sure you like, subscribe to the video. I will talk to you soon. Thanks again to Chris Weichman for joining us. Thank you. I will talk to you and see you next time. You are freaking awesome. No excuses. No excuses.